All right, so uh, welcome to our talk today. Um, we uh, found out uh, about yesterday at about one o'clock that there was a free spot open, so uh, the two of us kind of uh, uh, SWAT teamed it and, and uh, put together a presentation for you over the last uh, 24 hours. So uh, yeah, keep that in mind. <laughs> Um, my name is, uh, is Will Stevens. I'm the CTO here at, at, at CloudOps. Um, and uh, I'm here with my colleague, Mark Bayancourt. Yeah, so uh, I lead the products team at CloudOps. And today we're going to talk to you about a product called CloudMC. Uh, and we're really excited to share uh, with this audience the, uh, the work that we've invested the last few years. Yeah, so uh, you probably got it. If you came to the keynote uh, on Monday uh, with uh, Mike, he gave you a, a little bit of a, a hint at what CloudMC is able to do to, to deliver um, his products to market. And so we're going to get into a, a little bit more of that and how uh, CloudMC integrates with CloudStack. Um, so we'll get into it. <coughs> This is basically we're gonna, what we're going to cover today. We'll cover briefly uh, cloud ops and our, our mission and background, um, and then we'll get into the concepts around uh, cloud MC. Uh, we also have a little bit of a, a tidbit here that uh, is kind of uh, a special announcement just for this crowd. So uh, yeah. So in terms of cloud ops, cloud ops is uh, an organization that helps. Um, companies own their destiny in the cloud. Uh, that's our mission. We, we do that by leveraging open source uh, pretty effectively. Open source enables uh, organizations to have flexibility about the technology stack that they're using and um, gives them an insurance policy towards future-proofing their, um, their products and services that they offer to the market. Um, We've been working with, with CloudStack for, for many years, and it's been, uh, it's been uh, a solid product for being able to deliver infrastructure as a service. So we were founded in 2005, um, and uh, we've been growing pretty substantially over the, over the last uh, six years especially. Um, uh, we have been very active in the CloudStack community. Uh, I was the, the VP in 2016, um, was a release manager at the same time for the 4.9 release. And uh, we have multiple PMC and uh, committers on, in our organization. Um, we've, been, uh, we've been very active on, on community initiatives as well. And uh, we've also been developing plugins for, uh, for CloudStack for the community and for our customers. So CloudMC is a business portal which helps service providers monetize their services. Um, that is a bit of a mouthful. And we'll get into some of the more the, the, the details of that throughout this presentation. Um, but that gives you a little bit of a, a high level idea of what we're solving for and, um, and get you kind of oriented as you see some of the content as we move forward. So uh, there's a few uh, guiding principles that drive the way we develop and engineer uh, CloudMC. Um, we want to expose different services uh, so that they can be consumed and managed using consistent patterns, paradigm, and security model. Uh, so we, uh, we also want to foster uh, uh, very effective communication and collaboration between uh, different members uh, of a tenant, for example. Uh, people often work in isolation, but they also work in teams, and it's important that they have an elegant way of dealing with that kind of uh, use case. Uh, it's also important for providers and, uh, and customers alike to implement and, and enforce solid governance rules so that they can ensure that they're uh, consuming the service in a way that is both secure and aligned with their, uh, with their uh, cost uh, control. Um, 
We also developed this, this platform to maximize uh, the extensibility and allow to integrate as many services as we can. Uh, so we offer uh, a very powerful plugin mechanism, and, and in a couple of minutes, I'm going to uh, uh, go through this in more details. Um, but at the core, it's also important to make sure that the product can adapt through various situations. Uh, the last thing we would like to do is to fork our code for different customers because they have different needs. Uh, this would be a hell to manage. So we prefer to add the extra bit of engineering in our core products to ensure that we can address those different scenarios in a way that can easily be customized. Um, also, uh, the, the, uh, to ensure the success of a platform like CloudMC, uh, you gotta provide an enjoyable end user experience. Um, we found that people who are faced with an uh, a easy to use UI, something that, that talks to them, that presents the information in a, log in a logical way, that surfaces the info that they care about, and that ties the complexity, will have a lot more success in the market. Um, and if you look at the, uh, at the operator perspective, it's also important that the platform is easy to deploy, maintain, and operate. Uh, we strive to uh, offer uh, simple ways to manage all these aspects in our product. Uh, the application is very easy to deploy. It's, a, it's packaged as a Spring Boot application, so it's very self-contained. And even our plugins are, are just jar files that you drop into the class path, and that's it. It, it works. Uh, upgrades are uh, especially easy to apply. Uh, schemas are automatically updated, even if you skip a couple of versions. So it's very uh, easy to manage the system, very lightweight. It's also also multi-tenant, which is our multilingual, which is uh, oh, yeah. important for a service provider, as they're often serving multiple geographics and or multiple geographies, and often have uh, multiple languages covered in their in their product offerings. Yeah. We support three languages today: uh, English, French, and Spanish. And it's easy to add new ones uh, on a per as needed basis. Yes. So. There's a lot on this slide, um, and I'm, I'm going to try to simplify this slide quite a bit in, uh, in the way I present it. Essentially, um, there's one core concept that I want you to get off this slide, and that is essentially that there's a plugin SDK at the bottom that essentially consumes uh, providers or uh, services, APIs, and it then unifies uh, how that uh, API is used and presents uh, a northbound API that is an overlay or an abstraction layer over top of the, the underlying service API. And what that does is it allows us to have a consistent UI experience and API experience for the end user regardless of the number of services that are put underneath. Um, it also allows us to have consistency in the way that we do tenant management, the way that we do uh, governance and policies, uh, role-based access control, um, all, of the, all of the details around uh, usage reporting and metering and billing and all that, that sort of stuff. It basically gives us a foundation on which to work where we are able to, um, to add a lot of value add without having to have a very siloed um, uh, user experience. We can present a single user experience across multiple services because the logic of how the, um, the API is consumed and, and presented is all abstracted away into the SDK plugin. Um, so the end user who, uh, who sees the, the uh, elements in the, in the portal they, the, the SDK developer, never actually writes the UI that the end user sees. It is all automatically generated based on what is, uh, is developed in the SDK plugin. So I'm going to leave it at, there, at that. If you have more questions on this slide, we can, we can get into it as we go. But uh, that's the, the core principle that you need to understand for, uh, as we go forward. So there are a couple of and handful of components that are important to uh, remember about uh, CloudMC. The core engine is really 
uh, the, the place where all the business logic lies, uh, where, which orchestrates the different services that are uh, exposed through the plugins. Uh, the portal UI is, is a modern uh, single page web application. It's lightweight, it's optimized for fast performance, and it scales from the desktop down to the smallest mobile device. The plugin SDK is the uh, interface by which we can write new plugins to support different services. Uh, the service plugins are really what talks to the remote service and ensures that the information is conveyed to CloudMC in a way that it can understand and that it can interact with. Um, once a plugin is deployed, uh, it, it becomes uh, exposed to, to CloudMC through uh, a, an open API. So it becomes a glue between the web UI and the backend such that you can actually uh, provision and manage resources. And finally, obviously, we have a database to all the configuration information, uh, as well as usage and uh, audit logs. So this is probably the most important uh, diagram in this whole presentation. It talks about our plugin SDK. The SDK is, is really defines the contract on how to create a, a new CloudMC plugin. So a plugin acts as a translation layer between the CloudMC core engine and the API specific to the service uh, to which it interfaces to. Um, a plugin can provide coverage for a subset or the entirety of a service's API. Uh, so it doesn't need to map one-to-one -to, -one to a, a given uh, API. Uh, you can actually create meta operation that will actually orchestrate multiple simpler calls to, uh, to different concepts. So you can actually compose entities and expose a more complex model to your end users. Uh, so at the most basic, uh, the, the most basic plugin you can create is actually something that will implement the blue part, which is the connection with the actual remote service. So this would be the part where a plugin writer would define, these are the information that I need to connect to a remote service. So it might be an endpoint, or it might be like the, the, the type of credentials that you require to connect. And the plugin will know that uh, it has to, it can test the successful connectivity with the remote service. After that, uh, you start at the bottom, and this is where the plugin will define the entities that can be managed by it. So, what do we mean by entities? Well, these are the type of information you want to expose, that you want to be able to fetch from the service, and you want to be able to browse them or display them in CloudMC. Uh, so for a cloud stack plugin, for example, you might, the entities might be something like an instance, a network, a volume. Uh, if we uh, built a hypothetical uh, GitHub plugin, well, you would probably expose uh, commits, you would expose uh, pull requests, for example. So those are the type of information that an entity is conveying. Once you have those entities, you want to be able to perform operations on them. So you might want to be able to start an instance or destroy a volume. So the, uh, the plugin will, ex will, will contain the logic to apply those operations on the remote service. Uh, once this uh, connectivity is in place, uh, the next logical step is to uh, define the service management layer. So this is where you establish uh, the, uh, the entity's ownership. So this is where the plugin will actually create for each user or each organization, the actual uh, um, credentials on the remote service, such that you can uh, execute those operations with your own identity and it belongs to your own organization, for example. Uh, this ensures that you can also eventually retrieve your own API keys if you want to interact with that remote service uh, directly without going through CloudMC. Uh, once you have that, the plugin can then opt in to more advanced features exposed by, uh, by CloudMC, just, such as retrieving uh, users' data, uh, adding custom permissions to our security model, uh, establishing a pricing model such that you can actually charge money for uh, consuming those services. And you can also hook into more advanced uh, features such as trial management or uh, quota enforcement or even uh, define custom security policies. So once a plugin abides by this contract, uh, CloudMC, uh, as Will said, CloudMC takes care of all the ugly details of presenting this information uh, in a modern web application through a variety of predefined views. Uh, the plugin exposes enough metadata that the core engine can know what to do with it and renders sophisticated views, navigation, implement uh, all the validation logic, 
and uh, enable the operation workflow. So at runtime, CloudMC will enforce the security model associated with the plugin, uh, will facilitate the execution and chaining of synchronous and asynchronous operations, and uh, will also keep an, a detailed audit trail of all the operation executed by your end user, whether they do it through the web UI or through uh, API calls. So one of the core aspects and something we developed from the get-go when we uh, created CloudMC was the uh, very advanced multi-level, multi-tenant uh, capabilities. So this is really important if you want to uh, mimic uh, the structure of a complex organization, for example, or if you want to enable a reseller scenario. So uh, these are capabilities that our multi-level tenancy provides. Uh, in a, it, it also enables you to uh, act as a hook for uh, rebranding re your UI for a different company. Uh, so we provide very advanced uh, white labeling capabilities tied to the uh, multi-tenancy. Uh, in later screenshot that we're going to that we're going to show, uh, you'll see different uh, look and feel in the UI. They they don't all share the same colors and logos. They are they can be very different uh, from one deployment to another. Um, another very important concept in CloudMC is the concept of environment. So this is a, a way to sandbox your resources such that they can be logically grouped and securely uh, accessed by uh, your user. So uh, the simplest form is to create a, a personal environment for yourself. You'll be the only one uh, having access to those resources. Or you can work in, in, in a group with your uh, colleagues, for example. So you can assign different people to your environment such that you can all access the same resource, but you can control with which role you are assigned to the environment so that some people might have full access while others might have only read-only access and be, and be prevented from doing any harm to your, uh, to your data. Uh, but at the heart, environment is a way uh, to logically organize resources and uh, provide uh, proper security around it. Uh, on, in the case of CloudStack, the mapping is really easy. Uh, we, we, an environment corresponds usually to a project, although we also support uh, account-based environment. Uh, final thing is that we always track uh, usage information also at the environment level. So if you have a need to uh, charge back the usage uh, within your organization at the environment level, you can do so with CloudMC. That's in addition to the uh, to the tenant structure model, uh, where you can track obviously uh, by tenant or subtenant. So um, I know a lot of you probably have a pretty good understanding about how uh, CloudStack handles uh, service offerings, and you consume your uh, your resources through service offerings. So the, the pricing model can account, can use that. Um, basically, you can define pricing based on the service offerings that you have defined. Um, however, what, what we've found to be very useful is actually to be able to separate your pricing so that each of the core components of, the, uh, of what a organization is consuming, so say memory and CPU, um, actually be separated out and that you are pricing them independently. Um, this enables us to have a lot more flexibility and fine-grained control over how we do pricing. That becomes really important here. Um, we have uh, a, a relatively unique take on uh, reserved uh, resources. So. A lot of organizations, uh, public clouds and so on, they offer reserved instances, but they offer them in, the, in a way where you have, it's, it, it doesn't have a lot of flexibility. So you might be able to reserve an instance type, but you're reserving something like a four by eight instance type. You could, uh, you could make that reservation go to different VMs, but you're stuck with a four by eight instance type. If you want to use uh, 8 by 16, then that reservation is no longer valid for that, uh, uh, for that, um, those resources. So instead, what we do is we basically, you uh, reserve or you subscribe to a pool of resources. So let's just say that you are going to subscribe to uh, 100 CPUs and 200 gigs of RAM. Now, you can you can consume that reservation in any way that you'd like. So 
you could do 100 VMs that are one by two or five that are 20 by 40. I think my map is right there. Um, <laughs> so it can be, it can be um, broken up in any way. And it, does, it could be, um, no, I'm really gonna get, uh, never mind, I'm not gonna try that one. But you can, you can do one by twos, two by fours, four by eights, whatever, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's the consumption of the pool of resources that matters. And if you go beyond your pool of resources, then you're just charged utility rate. So even if you are in with it, you're, so you could be within your pool for your uh, CPU, but go above on memory, and then you're only charged for the memory that you consume on utility rates, and your, uh, your reserved pool um, is, is charged. Now, there's two different ways to do, uh, to do reserve pricing here. One is with a fixed monthly price. Say you spend $1,000 and you get your pool. Um, the other is that you basically have a discounted rate on utility charge. Um, so maybe you get a 50% a discount on utility. Um, and it, it, it is then broken down basically, your discount rate is broken down on each of the elements that you're, that you're selling. So it might be CPU, it might be memory, and so on. So you could give a 10% discount on, uh, on memory and a 30% discount on CPU, for example. Now, there's a bit of a gotcha in this one. Um, essentially, because there are different amount, uh, number of days in each month, then you have a variable, um, you have a variable um, amount that you're charging for your resource pool every month because you're charging it based on a discount to utility. So um, that, that means that it, since the, the length of the month is different, you have vari variation in what is charged. Um, so a lot of the customers choose to go with fi fixed monthly uh, prices and then and they basically simplify uh, the calculation to make sure that they're charged every month. And it makes it easier from a, um, from a, a billing system if you don't have an integration. That said, all of the, um, all of the, the metrics for uh, the consumption and metering is all exposed through the API. So if you want to build a, uh, a billing integration, that's possible as well. So we're gonna cover a couple of, of UI specific things. So you're gonna be able to make a mental picture of what this thing looks like. Um, I don't know if I mentioned previously, uh, we're actually on our second generation of our web UI. Uh, we're actually in, entering beta for this one uh, in the next few weeks. And uh, we, we've applied a lot of the lessons we learned from our, our legacy UI, let's say. Uh, but the, uh, so you're, you're going to see a mix of screenshots from both environments in, in uh, the next few pages. I'll make one other note as well. Uh, we're doing an office move right now, and we unplugged our lab in our office during this process. So uh, our ability to capture screenshots um, was somewhat limited <laughs> as our, uh, <laughs> as our uh, infrastructure is currently being set up in the data center right now. So uh, keep that in mind. Yeah. So as we said earlier, uh, the primary uh, uh, grouping uh, of resources is the environment. So what you're looking at right now is, is one environment, and it's identified by the name at the top, beta. 2R1 Dev2, so that's the environment name and the data center in which it's located. Uh, and by the way, I don't know if we mentioned it, but if you have multiple cloud stack environment running, you can actually connect all your cloud stack deployments to a single uh, CloudMC deployment. So that's very handy if you have a multi-region uh, deployment. So we're looking at one environment right now. We're in the dashboard tab, and you see a high-level picture of, of uh, salient information, like the environment membership. Uh, a couple of resource metrics that are consumed by this environment, as well as recent activity by the environment members. Uh, let's assume that we click on the instances tab, and at that point, uh, you see uh, the uh, instances that are, that are deployed in this environment. So uh, you have all the uh, important information that are uh, actually exposed, and you can trigger various operations on these instances. Some of them are, are quite obvious, some, of, some others are hidden behind the uh, three dot uh, menu. And from there, you would be able as well to trigger the uh, provisioning of new instances. Assuming that you click on one of those rows to see the details about one instance, 
this is where you would see the actual details uh, corresponding to that instance. And there's a couple of side tabs that you can also uh, select to, to get more information uh, contextually to the instance that you're looking at. So that's one of the uh, things we try to focus on is to uh, expose all the information that are relevant to the entity that you're actually viewing. So for instance, you might be in interested in knowing, okay, what volumes are attached to this instance or what are the port forwarding rules that point to that instance? So those are easily accessible from, from that page. So I clicked on the volume tab and, and at the bottom uh, I see my volumes and at the top I see all my important details about my instance. So this is a very uh, uh, interesting view and, and is the same for all those other tabs that you see uh, on, on, the, on the left. Uh, we also promote a lot of the navigability between those, those instances. So for example, if I click on the VPC uh, one, uh, this is where my uh, instance is deployed, I, I will be automatically navigated to the uh, details about that VPC, uh, along with the network information that is tied to it. So you can actually uh, go around and, and, and navigate all the entities that are related together and uh, you're always one click away from the information that, that you care about. So that's really useful. Um, so we talked about operation on entities. Uh, I'm gonna show you an example of that. Uh, it's probably one of the most uh, complex workflows, so adding an instance in CloudStack. Uh, it's complex because we allow you to perform additional operation that you can usually do on a CloudStack uh, instance creation. Uh, we, we use this opportunity to not only create the instance itself, but also to allocate uh, uh, related resources, like you can uh, easily uh, acquire an additional public IP in this operation uh, and open up some specific ports. If you have a web server, you want to open port uh, 80 and 443. Uh, you might also uh, request more capacity to attach to your instance, so you might want to create a volume while you're at it. So all, all these operations can be performed uh, using the operation. So it's kind of a multi-step, but you just scroll down. And you can see that the richness of our plugin uh, system allows you to show a really, really uh, rich interface. And you can easily browse uh, the different uh, attributes that you can uh, associate with your instance. And when you make selection about, let's say, your instance uh, sizing, on the right-hand side, in the cost estimator, you will see the, the immediate effect of making the, these selections on, on, your, uh, on your instance. So you will see what will be the hourly cost as well as the monthly cost. And it's all calculated in real time according to the pricing model that is in effect uh, for, for, for these uh, kind of resources. Uh, finally, you can also associate uh, all the usual stuff, SSH key, uh, uh, cloud init. And once you're done, your instance will be launched and, and CloudMC will take care of orchestrating all the API, the API calls required to allocate not only your VM, but also all the uh, side uh, elements that you've selected. And you will be advised uh, of the progress of this process. And if you have uh, colleagues that are logged in and that share access to your same environment, they will be advised in real time through WebSockets and, and the, uh, the interface will always be updated in real time to reflect the latest status. One of the other things that, uh, that we do as well is because this operation can be made up of multiple other operations, we don't cover it elsewhere in the, uh, in the presentation, but I figured it'd be worth noting. Um, in the activity log, what we do is we actually have a, a correlation ID that we, uh, that we pass with those, uh, uh, that calls. transaction. Yeah, so when, if, if there is a failure at some point in, in that process of say five or six different API calls, then when we ship all our logs to Logstash, we can actually correlate all of the different uh, related actions for that transaction. Uh, yeah, that's true. and very convenient for operation uh, folks. Uh, and if you have a mobile device, you can access those same operation. We, we've, we've basically ensured that the UI always looks good no matter what device you use, and, and the same operations are, uh, can be uh, executed uh, as elegantly. It's an uncompromised experience. Um, 
we talked about environments. This is how you create new environments. Very simple, it's a three-step process. You start by giving it a name, and then you manage the members, as you can see in this UI. So you simply select uh, new members from the list of available uh, people at the bottom. Those would be the other people in your organization that are not member yet of this environment. And you can see that Franz has an environment admin role, which means that he has full access on this environment. He can basically create, and delete, uh, and, and clobber anything he wants while my uh, access is limited to read-only, so I can do any damage in this environment. Um, all this talk about usage and assigning pricing and, and, and metering the uh, usage, uh, it all makes sense when you actually generate usage reports. Uh, so this is uh, one of the usage reports we generate, and it shows both the utility pricing at the bottom as well as the reserve resource at the top. So uh, the, uh, you, you'll get a consistent view of your usage. You can, do, uh, this, you can generate those reports for any time period, for a specific environment, for uh, like, yeah, there, there's a lot of, of criteria you can also apply when you generate this. And the same information can be retrieved by uh, true API calls if you want to integrate uh, with uh, your billing system. Um, yeah. Similarly, uh, I, I indicated you, all the uh, actions that are triggered by user, whether it's done through the web UI or by APIs, uh, and whether they cater to uh, the system or to the plugins, they're all tracked and audited carefully. And uh, we provide the activity tracking uh, views to perform queries. So if you want to find out who deleted that VM, well, you can search rather quickly uh, by uh, specifying the type of operation you care about, or you can just look for a, a given time frame to see who did what at what time. And you can even track their, their uh, actual IP address. So if, you, if you're suspicious about different activity, you can take a careful look. And all the operations that, are, uh, that consist of this uh, uh, orchestration of multiple API calls will be uh, shown in a hierarchical view, and you see exactly at which step an operation failed uh, to execute. And the same, uh, the same uh, time criteria that you saw in that screen are also applicable to the uh, report generation. Uh, another very important uh, feature is our ability to, to uh, work with tags. Uh, I'm sure you know when you define uh, offerings in Cloud Stack, you can either do it globally or you can do it for a specific domain. Uh, you can't easily assign that offering to a collection of domains. Uh, nor can you extend their, their scope after the fact. So CloudMC provides a very uh, uh, efficient or flexible approach to address this challenge. First, you define your, your offerings in CloudStack in a global fashion. And then you assign uh, specific tags to your different organization or tenants. And finally, you customize uh, the, the visibility of your offerings based on those tags. So you can... Uh, basically add policies on a per offering basis to indicate whether this offering is going to be visible or invisible uh, depending on the presence or, or absence of a tag. So it's very powerful. Uh, it allows you to easily, for example, uh, uh, offer a sneak peek access uh, to specific offerings to a, a reduced set of customers. That's really useful. Or in the end of life of an offering, you can make sure that only your legacy customer can access a given offering, so you have ways to, to actually uh, play with your offering visibility at that point. It's also worth noting that the tags referenced here have nothing to do with the cloud stack tags, mm -hmm. just to make sure that was clear. And you also see in that screen that even for uh, your typical custom compute offerings, you have a lot of knobs here that you can configure because cloud stack will actually uh, not allow you to configure which of those values are visible. While in CloudMC, we can uh, customize uh, exactly the type of, of uh, allowed values that you want to expose, as well as the ratio of, let's say, CPU to RAM that you want to allocate. So uh, it allows for better and more efficient capacity management. Uh, an option that's really interesting for uh, an operators is the ability to uh, manage trial accounts. So if customer want to uh, try out your platform, well, we can reduce a lot of the friction uh, needed in, in on onboarding uh, new users to the platform. Uh, so in that screen, uh, your, your users can actually self-create their trial accounts. Uh, there's an actual 
uh, approval workflow that will also uh, automatically kick in, uh, kick in. So your trial request might be automatically approved or they might require the attention of a trial uh, manager. And once the uh, trial account is, is, uh, is approved, automatically the, uh, an environment will be created for the end user. We will create their first network automatically. So they're two clicks away from creating their first instance on your platform. Uh, the end user that has a trial account will always see uh, at the top of his screen how much time is left uh, for the trial. Uh, and uh, at trial expiration, the resource will automatically be stopped and eventually dated after a configurable delay. So you'll never end, uh, end up uh, uh, losing a lot of resources due to trial accounts. The system automatically cleans itself. Um, and the trial manager can always follow the life cycle of your various trials. So for each trial account, uh, we, we track a lot of information, including the activity level. So it's easy to see which trial accounts actually use the system or not. And you can perform all kinds of action to extend a trial or... Yeah, that, that's also very useful for, uh, well, this, this as well, but you can extend a trial and convert them to billing and that sort of thing. That's, uh, that's, always, that's very useful. Mm -hmm. You can even change their quota if you need uh, to do that. Uh, by providing additional information, such as uh, the number of login counts on a per user basis or uh, looking at the detailed activity feed, we provide a way for, uh, for operators to actually engage with the uh, trial accounts and, and uh, making sure that the system accurately addresses their needs. And you can have a conversation that leads to better uh, conversion to actual billable customers. I uh, told you about white labeling before, so, uh, and you've seen different look and feel uh, so far. Uh, so we provide, uh, that's in your legacy UI, but the same thing will also apply to the uh, next generation. So we provide ways to co completely uh, uh, customize the colors, the look and feel, uh, the logos, the name of the application, all these things. You can even customize which language will be offered on your own deployment, uh, in which order. Uh, and additional things will, will come as well. So uh, the ability to customize that is really important. Uh, and the, uh, the fact that you can apply that at any level in the tenant ERT is also really powerful. Uh, beyond management of services, uh, CloudMC strives to offer a well-integrated end user experience at every level. Uh, for example, we provide uh, advanced content management capabilities uh, such that administrator can carefully customize elements like email templates uh, and user notification. Let's say you want to uh, advise your user that uh, there's a maintenance coming up real soon. Uh, and you can even uh, offer a complete uh, knowledge base to act as the first line of support for your end users. Uh, so this is all done in alignment with the language defined uh, throughout the white labeling feature. So if you have a bilingual system, you will have the capacity to def define your, your knowledge base in both languages. Uh, well, this is what it would look like uh, as the main entry point for your help center. Uh, so it's a categorized uh, 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 collection of articles about different subjects. Uh, as, as the uh, operator, this is the interface you have to actually alter your articles and configure them and publish them. So there's even a, a workflow to actually publish uh, draft articles. This is what the, uh, the WYSIWYG editor looks like. And once it's actually published, this is what uh, the browsing experience looks like for the end user. So looking at a specific article, you also have uh, related articles in the same category. And finally, all of these articles are fully searchable. So uh, it's a complete package to make the end user experience really uh, effective and uh, efficient. So I, uh, I discussed earlier a little bit about how uh, CloudMC enables service providers to deliver all of their uh, services through the same dashboard and through the same, same pane of glass. Um, Mark has, has gone through the majority of the features around our, our deep integration. So our plugin SDK gives us the ability to have a very deep integration with um, the, the services through their APIs. Um, but a lot, of, a lot of legacy service provider um, uh, services don't have an API or sometimes they don't even have single sign-on 
and they're, they are trying to expose all their services through a single pane of glass, but without single sign-on, without any of that kind of stuff, it makes it very hard to give a unified experience to the, to the end user. So Master Portal is the, is the shallow integration um, uh, option. And essentially what it does is it offers single sign-on for all of your applications, even if they don't support single sign-on. Um, and it also allows you to, um, to basically have a single point. Uh, so you can have the, the credentials can be exposed to the, to the end users or not. Um, and it gives you a, a single point where you have um, uh, access or revocation of a user's um, uh, access to your to the services. Um, one of the other things that's interesting about this, it, if you haven't understood so far, um, one of the things is that we are we are because we are essentially proxying access to these uh, services behind, which allows us to do authentication uh, uh, for one. But it also allows us to do um, to expose services that are not actually public services. So it allows us to uh, to put services, make services available to tenants without them having to have VPN access and also not having to have them on the public internet. Um, so it gives a lot of flexibility about around how you actually bring together all your services, deliver them all through a single pane of glass. Um, while giving you the opportunity to um, to do a deep integration where it makes sense and do a shallow integration for everything else where it doesn't make sense, um, and this can be a stepping stone if you if you want to do a shallow integration uh, initially, and then uh, there's a business case for making a deeper integration because uh, the customers want it, or you want a tighter integration between your services, then you can uh, invest in a in a deeper integration. But the customer, you're not transitioning the customer between different workflows. All of their, their entry into your service portfolio is all through the same pane of glass. And that transition will be natural for them. And they won't have to, uh, to use a different system um, as you transition your, your service offerings. Uh, let's look at a couple of roadmap features. Um, things that we're working on uh, and that will be delivered in the uh, near or to medium term future. Uh, we've had a lot of requests to support multiple currencies. So today we have a global configurable currency uh, at the system level, but if you want to have multiple pricing at the same time using different currencies, that, that's something that we're aiming to implement. Uh, also having the capacity to define multiple pricing models that are concurrently applied. Uh, for example, resellers would like to have this capability. They, want, they don't want to resell the, the resources at the same rate that they're paying to the main operator, for sure. Also, uh, as an operator, maybe you want to offer uh, different pricing to different categories of customers. Let's say you have your gold customer and your bronze customer. That's the same price. Uh, a lot of requests also to enable uh, tracking of licenses, or maybe you want simply to track the uh, human uh, effort, like, uh, I don't know, you have managed services and you want to be able to track that as part of the same exercise, the same uh, monthly uh, uh, um, tallying of, of the resource consumption. Um, also, uh, some people have asked for the ability to define uh, the type of resource pool that Will was talking about, but across multiple regions. So that's another, having the flexibility to deploy your resource across different geographical area is also, uh, but sharing the same pool of resource, that's another. Uh, having organization specific discount is another request that we've uh, heard, heard a couple of times, so we will work on that. Uh, we're doing a big push to actually uh, give even more richness to our uh, role-based access control. So we have a lot of uh, flexibility today, but we're going to offer even more, especially in the case of managed services where one person uh, has the ability to manage as an operator multiple specific orgs, but not everyone. So that's, uh, if you have accounts, for example, with different customers, you, it's normal that you would be able to manage those specific customers. So we will be able to do that explicitly one by one or based on the tag uh, that we've talked about earlier. And finally, uh, being able to uh, support, obviously, additional integration. So we have 
Our strongest integration today is with CloudStack. We also support OpenStack. We saw the master portal integration uh, slide back. Uh, there's a couple of things that are, yeah, we have Swift. Uh, we support object storage to Swift. Uh, so there's already a lot of things in flight, but there, there's uh, obviously other uh, interesting targets like Kubernetes, public clouds, and stuff like that. So uh, we, we've uh, got a long roadmap ahead of us. So now there is a, a little bit of announcement here that uh, is kind of, um, it, it's official internally, but uh, it hasn't necessarily been made official uh, publicly. So we're going to be open sourcing key components of CloudMC. Um, the details are still to be determined. Um, in our experience, given that we work with open source all the time, we understand that uh, the, the ability to have a successful open source um, uh, launch is making sure that you have all the collateral and material in place so that um, users are, be able, are able to kick the tires and get going right away, have clear documentation, understand what the, what the process is, um, understand how to contribute, uh, what the rules of engagement are, and so on. So uh, that's something that we are still working out. Um, there's there's going to be uh, support and maintenance uh, to, be, to be considered as well. We want to make sure that as more uh, organizations uh, contribute to the platform, that we have backwards compatibility for our production customers who are using the platform today. So we have to make sure that um, that as contributions come in, that they are uh, that they are integrated into the platform in a way that it is non-destructive for for our existing customers today. Um, so. It's very much a sneak preview, but uh, stay tuned. And uh, and if you would like more information, come and get uh, come and uh, and give us your contact information, and we'll uh, we'll get you more information. And that is pretty much it. Um, I feel like I missed a slide. Did we? Whatever. Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> um, any questions? Charles. So there's, there's two options here. Um, there, you have access to the CloudMC API for sure. Um, and that is what we would recommend in order to be able to make sure that you have, that the actions of your users are tracked in the activity log and so on. Um, that said, we don't, we actually have the ability to toggle whether or not we expose the underlying APIs and endpoints to the customer so that they can actually uh, access the CloudStack API directly. Um, and we have this control on a per connection basis. So if you want to give full API access on, on one CloudStack deployment, but not on your object storage, for example, you, you are free to do that. Right, or, or if you have a customer that has a dedicated infrastructure and they, they want access to their infrastructure that you're managing uh, through CloudMC and they have their own service connection, you can give them access to their, uh, to their, cloud, uh, their CloudStack API for them. And then all of your other customers who are using shared service and are, are um, basically consuming your other, your other regions, they would then be uh, using the, the CloudMC API so that you can then have uh, the, the, the governance and, um, and uh, activity tracking that CloudMC gives. Does that answer the question? You can actually implement this on a per or tag basis. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we, we run into this a little bit as well because um, we have, we are, we're, we're currently, as we do our office move, also going through a SOC 2 audit. Um, so we have had to, just to make it fun, um, we, uh, so we've had to actually implement uh, things because if we're offering managed services and those are SOC 2, then we have to make sure that our managed service provider has to um, not let the customer see their, their um, actual CloudStack APIs so that 
they are only read-only in Cloud MC, and they don't have access to changing the infrastructure underneath, because otherwise your managed services are pretty much borked. Uh, so yeah, that gives you a bit of an idea of the, the complexity that we work with. More questions? I feel, I feel like <laughs> I was expecting questions. All right, fair enough. Feel free to come to us if you have, uh, if you want to uh, have more conversation on different subjects. Yeah, we'll be, uh, we're, we're likely going to be in the in the hackathon room in uh, VJC um, most of the day tomorrow. So if you want to come and pick our brain, come and pick our brain. Thank you, guys.